Welcome to Gilmore Park United Church in this time of worship. I'm Reverend Maggie Watts Hammond, and we gather here for worship and for prayer and for communion. We worship together or apart, together and apart. We pray where we are, whether we are alone or with others. We pray anywhere. We are in communion over distance. We are in communion with one another, with God, with Christ, and hovered over by the Holy Spirit. It is our tradition that when we gather, our worship would include the word, the story that we tell. It would include prayer and reflection and communion. When you come to church for communion, people prepare the elements for you, but today you will have to prepare for yourself. And so in just a minute, I'm going to pause so that you can do that if you have not already done so. So you will need some things. You will need some juice and some bread. It can be any kind of juice. We usually use grape juice, but use what you have and water is fine for today. You'll need a candle and something to light the candle with. A jug for pouring and glasses to pour into. You need glasses for everybody who is with you. And so now I say, go if you need to pause and gather these things and then set the table, for we will gather round the table at the time of communion. candle to start. We remember that Christ, the light of the world, is always with us. Let us pray. 
God of rock and mountain. We dwell in your shelter. We abide in your shadow for life. We call out to God. You are my refuge, my rock in whom I trust. The snare will never capture us, and famine will bring us no fear. Under your wings is our refuge, and your faithfulness is our shield. We need not fear the terror of the night, nor an arrow that flies by day. We ask you, God, to guard us. We beg you, keep safe all whom we love. Your servant David sang of your deliverance. Your prophets called out your name. Your disciples trusted you even in confusion, that you would be with them and with us in time of trouble, that in acting for you, we honor you, and that in itself is long life, that you would show us a saving power, like an eagle raises her young on her back, bearing us up on wings like eagles. You would bear us on the breath of dawn, and set us down in the palm of your hand. John, chapter 10, verses 1 to 18. Very truly, I tell you, anyone who does not enter the sheepfold by the gate, but climbs in another way, is a thief and a bandit. The one who enters by the gate is the shepherd of the sheep. The gatekeeper opens the gate for him, and the sheep hear his voice. He calls out his own sheep by name and leads them out. When he has brought out all his own, he goes ahead of them, and the sheep follow him because they know his voice. They will not follow a stranger, but they will run from him because they do not know the voice of strangers. Jesus used this figure of speech with them but they did not understand what he was saying to them. So again, Jesus said to them, Very truly, I tell you, I am the gate for the sheep. All who came before me are thieves and bandits, but the sheep did not listen to them. I am the gate. Whoever enters by me will be saved and will come in and go out and find pasture. The thief comes only to steal, steal and kill and destroy. I came that they may have life and have it abundantly. I am the Good Shepherd. The Good Shepherd lays down his life for the sheep. The hired hand who is not the shepherd and does not own the sheep sees the wolf coming and leaves the sheep and runs away and the wolf snatches them and scatters them. The hired hand runs away because a hired hand does not care for the sheep. I am the good shepherd. I know my own and my own know me, just as the Father knows me and I know the Father. And I lay down my life for the sheep. I have other sheep that do not belong to this fold. I must bring them also and they will listen to my voice. So there will be one flock, one shepherd. For this reason, the Father loves me, because I lay down my life in order to take it up again. No one takes it from me, but I lay it down of my own accord. I have power to lay it down, and I have power to take it up again. I have received this command from my Father. The Lord is my shepherd, I shall not want. He makes me to lie down in green pastures. He leadeth me beside the still waters. He restores my soul. He leads me in the path of righteousness for his name's sake. Yea, though I walk through the valley of the shadow of death, I will fear no evil, for thou art with me. Thy rod and thy staff, they comfort me. Thou preparest a table before me in the presence of mine enemies. 
thou anointest my head with oil my cup runneth over surely goodness and mercy shall follow me all the days of my life and i will dwell in the house of the lord forever amen and so we gather for communion and we say the lord be with you lift up your hearts for we lift them to the lord give thanks to the lord our god we gather to give thanks and praise we gather around a great mystery that the god who created the universe spinning stars and great galaxies who created humanity and all our strangeness and surprises who spoke in fire and in silence who gave prophets courage is the god who dwelt here on earth as a man with hands to break bread and lips to sip and is still among us in ways we don't understand is present to us in the most common place of material things in bread and in drink without which we could not live in water and in wine in juice that mysteriously becomes wine and bread that mysteriously rises and so we say together the lord's prayer our father who art in heaven hallowed be thy name thy kingdom come thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven give us this day our daily bread and forgive us our trespasses for we forgive those who trespass against us lead us not into temptation but deliver us from evil for thine is the kingdom, the power, and the glory, forever and ever. Amen. It is the practice that when we begin this, we begin with a prayer of self-giving. Loving God, we rejoice in the gift of your grace, remembering Christ's life and death, proclaiming his resurrection, waiting in hope for his coming again. Grant that in praise and thanksgiving, we may so offer ourselves to you that our lives may proclaim the mystery of faith. When asked, Paul the Apostle told people this story of the communion. For I received from the Lord what I also handed on to you that the Lord Jesus on the night when he was betrayed took a loaf of bread and when he had given thanks he broke it and said this is my body that is for you do this in remembrance of me in the same way he took the cup also after supper saying this cup is the new covenant in my blood do this as often as you drink it in remembrance of me. For as often as you eat this bread and drink this cup, you proclaim the Lord's death until he comes. You are gathered around your own table. And so you may say the prayers after me if you wish, or just hear them in your heads. And so you take the bread, saying, Blessed are you, Lord God, Creator, Son, and Spirit, for you have given us bread to feed us, and the bread of the Spirit to feed our souls. And we break the bread, saying, This is your body, broken but whole, in which we meet you. And now, pass bread to everyone at your table. And you may imagine the disciples are your church family there with you. And now we eat together. And here is the wine. And we bless the wine saying, Blessed are you, Lord God, maker of rivers, sower of seeds, water on all that lives. For you have given us drink, water of life, juice of growing things without which we could not live 
and now pour for everyone at your table. For Christ poured out his life for us. And now, drink together. Let us pray together. Liquid of life and bread of our bodies, we meet you and take you in, in this mystery of faith. We ask that you dwell in us and transform us into a body of believers that is so inspired by you that our love and celebration fill the earth. Amen. The wine has been poured out for us. The bread has been offered to us. Our bodies have been nourished, our souls, we hope, inspired. And we have asked God for transformation. And now we go out back to our world, whether it is an enclosed one or a broad one, but knowing that being in communion with one another, 
we share in something with us. May God go with you as you go, comfort you in this time, and be with those you love. Amen.